Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell in the upper right hand corner. Follow me on all forms of social media. Check me out at thedrummerguy.com and enjoy the following presentation. And thank you. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to do this. Uh, it's a tremendous honor to be able to talk to you about everything that's going on right now with uh, Turilli Leon Rhapsody. And of course, uh, the brand new album Zero Gravity, Rebirth and Evolution, which is coming out the 5th of July through Nuclear Blast. Yes, yeah, we postponed one week. First release was 28th of June, but then we, we will release on the 5th of July, yes. So with that in mind, how did the songwriting process begin for this album? Well, actually, we spent more than three months in the studio, and of course, we composed before, and uh, may, most of the things are done by Luca, as you may know, and of course, together, we, we finalize everything, especially regarding vocal lines, and um, the idea <clears throat> of doing this record was, uh, I mean, was not planned. We, we wanted to celebrate 20 years of Rhapsody history, um, and say farewell to the old style of the band. We spent so a great time during the tour, and we received a lot of proposals, labels, managers, promoters. So during the tour, we start thinking and talk uh, with the band and with ourselves to. We start thinking to do something new together, but with a new sound and something different. Using the name Rhapsody, of course, but something fresh and new. And here we are. I mean, we we compose around six months, I think, and uh, and then we spend more than three months in the studio. And the result is very nice. We really like what we we did. And uh, I have to say that we did even more because. We have also a very long song, more than 15 mus uh, minutes, that we didn't include in this record because otherwise it will be never ending. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so it's great because we 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 had uh, we were really excited in the studio and we did many many things. So it's good that we have already one song for the next one ready and one very long one. And so that's it. <laughs> oh, awesome. And, you know, it's it's great to see that, too. I mean, after the rousing success of uh, the previous Rhapsody tour and wanting to be able to continue on with a continuation of the Rhapsody name and being able to make it something new. I mean, obviously, there's going to be little hints of the past. I mean, that's just going to come off from, from your vocal lines. It's going to come through Luca's uh, playing. I mean, that's just going to happen in the songwriting. But I love the diversity of this album. There's so many different changes and unexpected ideas that I never would have imagined in Rhapsody, but it just fits so well together and it just makes for an amazing album. Thank you. I mean, this was what we had in mind. I mean, of course, you can still feel the Rhapsody touch um, because we are not completely different compared to the past, but for sure it's a kind of evolution and and we had many more new elements and it's more various of course um so it's a it's a change so that's why we we were a little bit scared uh sometimes in the studio because we were thinking wow uh, most of the fans probably they they expect something more easy more power metal more direct more connected with the past but we didn't want to make a power metal record because uh, it will be not honest with ourselves, you know, with with what we want to, to do now. And I think we did it good because uh, the result is very, very good. Everybody is telling to me that uh, the album is somehow uh, fresh and unexpected. So, so we are happy and uh, let's see the reaction of the fans. We know that probably a part of the fans will be not disappointed, but, you know, if you expect really 10 power metal songs, maybe this is not the right record. <laughs> but um, this is what we like now, so that's the most important thing. Yeah, and I couldn't agree more. I mean, 
when you are a musician and you are creating your own music, you want to be able to uh, be able to show off who you are at that present time. I mean, obviously, you want to be able to uh, pay tr tribute to the fans that have been there for as long as they have while keeping the Rhapsody name, but being able to make this change, I mean, as a longtime fan of the band, I really, truly appreciate the changes that are going on with this album, be it the lyrical oh. content, be it the oh. musical direction, everything going on to it just feels really natural, unexpected, but natural. Well, thank you so much. This is exactly what I wanted to hear because, uh, you know, after more than 20 years, it simply is boring and doesn't make sense to do the same song after many years. So I am really happy because I had the chance to work with Luca again. And after many years, we know each other very well. So he's a great composer and he knows exactly uh, what he can have from you to squeeze you like a lemon, you know. So when he composes a song and he has uh, he have, uh, in mind the voice that will sing the song, this, this makes him a great composer. Not just regarding the music, but also thinking about the guy that will have to sing the songs. You know, and so he, he composed in a different way. And uh, between me and him, it's just amazing because in the studio, we this was the best time ever that we had in the studio. Simone Mularoni, the sound engineer, was really surprised because uh, he never worked for, with Luca. I knew him before, but we did different kind of stuff. And uh, we had some queen parts, some very... <laughs> Uh, different kind of uh, colors in the voice and and he was expecting that we spend really a long time to do it but then it was faster than ever so but this because we know each other very well me and Luca that's the point so and uh, yeah we are really satisfied it, it, it's probably the record that gave me more in my life because finally I was able to to sing in the way that I want. And so to, to, to have different colors in the voice, you know, not just scream and try to show to the people that you are a good um, screamer or a power metal singer that honestly, I never consider myself just a power metal singer, but that's it, so. Oh yes, and and with that as well, I mean, obviously, I can imagine how rewarding this album is, not just being able to reunite musically with Luca, I mean, obviously being able to tour with him once again and then being able to write music, but I hear the passion that's going on in your voice here, and I can definitely, I was going to bring it up if you didn't, I could definitely hear that you are singing the way that you want to sing, being able to show off everything that you want to on an album, and with that, I mean, as much as I love what you've done in any other project that you've been a part of i love what you're doing on this album so much and i think it's one of your finest albums today thank you so much i agree with you because i think that most of the fans will be not shocked but really surprised if they expect um the classical good nice power metal song well it's not the case i mean you can definitely realize that we did whatever we wanted to do and what we like to do. And uh, yeah, regarding me, I was really happy, really happy in the studio. And uh, I told you, this was probably my best time ever in the studio because I had the chance to sing a uh, finally very low opera, uh, kind of queen style, uh, rock, metal, aggressive. Uh, there is a song that reminds me a little bit of Rammstein, for example, the fourth song, Fast Radio Burst. And uh, yeah, uh, even the Italian songs are really particular, especially Arcanum, Da Vinci's Enigma. I think this song is probably maybe my favorite one. And I also like, uh, uh, not like Love, the song I Am. I think this song is completely, uh, uh, amazing because it's um, it's a kind of progressive metal song mixed with Queen, mixed with uh, many elements. There is also Marco Basile, a friend of mine, singing with me in this song. So what I like of this record is that it's uh, not boring. You can listen to it and when it's done, you have the feeling 
to listen again. So this is good because it means that the music is um, fresh and uh, well done with passion. Oh, very much so. And yeah, with that, I mean, I Am is uh, currently my favorite track off the album. And I just, uh, again, for all of those reasons, being able to show off that range, both musically and what you're doing with your voice, just, I love the attachment to that song so much. But yeah, just like you mentioned with a uh, fast radio burst, I mean, being able to hear more of that industrial Rammstein sound to it, uh, the Italian tracks, that, uh, being able to show off that side on a Rhapsody album again, you know, just like being able to do all these things on a Rhapsody album. It's just, it's so great because I love so many different styles of music and it's so great to hear that in a Rhapsody album now. Yeah, and I think it will be even more great to, to hear this live because we, we can't wait to play the record live. Of course, in the beginning we will play half of the songs, I, I guess, and uh, we have to play some old uh, hits. But then, of course, uh, we have mine... Uh, there is a plan to play completely the record from the beginning to the end. Not immediately now, but in the future. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I, the, the, this is what I like. The different colors of voice, vocal approach and different colors in music. Because uh, in, in this record, there is not just metal, in my opinion. There, there are many, many more elements. And uh, that's why my mother like it. I mean, my mother doesn't listen rock, doesn't like heavy metal music, but she liked the record because I let her listen something. And because it's uh, various, there are many, many things. And even if you are not a metal fan, probably you can like this record. But still, um, I think it's uh, very good also for metal fans. I mean, we are not singing, I mean, blues anyway. So <laughs> it's not yet. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, th that was another thing I was going to be uh, asking later, and I'm I'm glad to see that uh, the album played in its entirety is something that will be uh, potentially happening in the future because it does feel like one of those albums that would just be tremendous to be in the audience and listen to, let alone being able to play the album yourself. So I'm glad to see that the album was written with uh, be with it being played live, uh, just with the idea yes. of doing that. Yeah, it's not easy, of course, because this record is really uh, <coughs> complicated. But mm, yes, we definitely want to play the record completely live in, in the next future. And uh, well, of course, I have to choose the right melodies. And so we have to use some samplers. Um, because, of course, when there are the queen part, I have to do the main vocal line, then I, I can't sing the all the 25 voices I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and Luca, uh, this is interesting, because uh, Luca will play also piano stage, because not many people know that Luca is not just a guitar player. He's a pianist, so he's a, he's a very good keyboard player. Actually, <clears throat> maybe better keyboard player than a guitar player. So uh, this would be also interesting to see him play live half-time guitar and half-time keyboards. So this is something unexpected, I guess, for the people. So um, I think we will offer a very uh, nice show and we will surprise a lot of people. Oh, it's definitely got me very excited right now. I mean, uh, the the fact that the album is as amazing as it is, and it will be getting that uh, full live treatment and the great proper live promotion that's going on behind it, because, I mean, this feels like such a great rebirth of what's going on with the Rhapsody name, and it's great to see that while you'll still be paying homage to the past, that you are looking ahead to the future and being able to continue with the sound and looking forward to see w what will happen in the future as well. Yeah, I mean, we, as you may know, we had some troubles in the past regarding the name, uh, in the band, with some bad choices. But it's great to see that the band is still together and that we look at the future. We want to, to, to go on with a new, fresh sound. And, uh, um, and I think we did the right thing. When we asked the, the other guys, Oldsfard and Patrice, the bass player, Dominique, to be part of this new band, we told them we will use the name Rhapsody, but we will create completely different music. So they were um, free to choose, to say, yes, 
I like the idea. No, I prefer to play the old stuff. So we are really happy because everybody in the band uh, agreed with me and Luca, and uh, and I see that we have a very good uh, possibilities. I mean, I don't say that we did the best record ever, but I think uh, considering all the troubles that we had in the past, we probably did a miracle, <laughs> something like this. <laughs> Yeah, and again, you know, just uh, from the fan perspective, I mean, it's one of my favorite albums under the Rhapsody name, and the more that I get the opportunity to listen to the album, it arguably might become my favorite album under the Rhapsody name. And like I said, I mean, uh, the fact that everything is going forward the way that it is with uh, the the live shows uh, coming up in the future, uh, the future releases, um, if that uh, 15 minute song uh, does get a release in the future, I would love to hear that side of what's going on the band i mean there's just so much to look forward to under this banner yeah i mean uh, at the moment we are planning many many things shows and it's great that we we are receiving great offers even if the record is not released so this is amazing i mean and and of course we have a in this moment we are really excited because uh, we had um, this 16 minutes I guess was a song composed done and it's really really good but of course we didn't it was not possible to include in this record the song because it was like then you had a record of 80 82 minutes I mean and no 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 way and uh, yeah, I mean, I see that we have a very good chances to do good things, and uh, the most important thing is that everybody is excited, and uh, the people that were listening to the record, everybody told me that they love the record, the work, so this is something that gives us even more energy, because we, we spent more than three months in the studio, so it was not really... Uh, easy for us, but uh, I think we did our best. Oh, and I definitely agree. And with that in mind, uh, obviously being able to choose uh, the right songs uh, for the track length and uh, being able to get the right songs in the right order to make the album feel like an album experience, how hard was it to decide what was going to be the first single to be able to show off from this album? Yeah, this was not easy because uh, the songs are really different. So uh, we discussed a lot between me and Luca about the, the, the track list. And uh, even, yeah, regarding the, the first uh, single. In the end, we choose Phoenix Rising because we think this song is uh, the perfect bridge between, let's say, the past and, and the future. I mean, Phoenix Rising sounds like um, not so far from, from what Rhapsody was doing in the past. So it's still a power metal symphonic uh, uh, song with some more elements but it's not so far uh, from the old style and that's why we choose this as an opener because we wanted to, to to have this kind of bridge between the past and and the sound that we have now and uh, the reaction was very good until now uh, the fans like it even if I'm still thinking that probably a part of the fans are uh, they can think that the record is something like this song, and it's not like this. I mean, Phoenix Rising is a very cool song, but if you expect 10 songs like this, this is not the case. I mean, the record is really uh, various, and and so I have really, really a big curiosity to, to, to see the reaction of the fans, because uh, as you know, every song is really different, so... So let's see what what we will have. I mean, sometimes we were scared in the studio because we said maybe we are going we are going too far. But this is what we like now, you know. This is what we like to do now. So it's great. I mean, oh, definitely. And yeah, I definitely agree that uh, Phoenix Rising was a great choice to be able to show off. And of, of course, there's other songs that would have been great as a first single, but Fe Phoenix Rising was a great choice. And it does really bridge the gap between uh, the older sound and the newer sound, as opposed to something like Fast Radio Burst, where there, there might have been like a polar shock from like the 
uh, the crowd that may not have been yeah, expecting something like that. If we, if we put this song as the first single, probably everybody <laughs> would be shocked. Like, what the fuck they are doing? <laughs> you know, so... So, but, but anyway, we have this kind of songs in the record, so um, it's great. I think uh, now we will release a, a, a second single, and um, already now we can probably see some people uh, surprised, I guess, because um, it's completely different. You know, even the song with Elise of Amaranth, it's not something like an uh, old Rhapsody style at all. I mean, and it's a very nice song. I was really happy to have her, to have uh, Elise in, in the record, because we are good friends since the Camera Tour. We did many shows together, also in, in North America. And um, yeah, she's great. She's the best, in my opinion. So even if she was touring with Amaranth at the time, she found a day off to record the song. and. That was great. It was kind of easy for her because I was um, I was singing in the studio a uh, demo for her. So I was singing, imitate her voice. So it was listening my voice, singing like a girl. And uh, so it was uh, funny and nice to work together. Yeah, and you know, it's it's great hearing the combination of both your voices for that track. And again, like I mentioned previously on the album or about the album, it sounding so unexpected but natural. That's another great moment on here is uh, the guest spots on this album. You know, some some might not be expected, but it just it feels so natural for the album being able to get these different voices on the album. Yeah, yeah, it's true. The result was amazing with every every guest we had with Marco Basile with uh, Elise, or uh, Alessandro Conti was doing just some choirs, but uh, yeah, it's natural, you know. Okay, we spent, we spent a lot of time in the studio, so to have the result, and we explained to Marco exactly the way that we wanted him to sing, we choose the, 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 the sentences together, so it's better if I do the first verse, you prefer the second one, this is better for me, this is better for you. But yes, I agree with you. The, the result is really natural, so fits really well. And, uh, and regarding Elise, okay, I have nothing to say because uh, I think our voices are just perfect together. I don't know how to explain. It's like uh, I am the male version of her voice and uh, she uh, and she's the female version of my voice because sometimes we have the same frequencies. It's really uh, something amazing. Even the sound engineer in the studio was uh, a bit uh, in trouble because uh, we, we are uh, the same. We have uh, the same frequencies in the voice. So it's something unique, let's say. Yeah, and it again, it's just it's so great to hear that on the album. And now when I go back and listen to the track and, you know, like really pinpoint that, I know I'm going to be able to hear that more from the fan perspective. I mean, I was always able to hear similarities, but, you know, just like uh, being able to hear that now on an album together, it just, again, it's it's a perfect match. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, uh, I think we were lucky because we, we had the chance because uh, uh, Elisa was... a busy touring. Marco was uh, a coincidence is that uh, Marco is the singer of the sound engineer that we had in the studio. So it was easy to have him. And, and then of course we have also Sasha Pet in the bonus track, Oceano, um, recorded some bass and uh, he's a very good old friend of the band. And uh, yeah, I agree with you. It's a uh, it went better than the expectation, for sure. Oh, it, and again, you know, it's just, it's great to hear that from the fan perspective again, you know, just everything lining up the way that it should. Uh, you and Luca getting back together uh, under a form of the Rhapsody banner, being able to forge your own sound, uh, being able to continue on with this. I mean, if this is already what you're doing with uh, this new rebirth in the band, I'm just excited to see what's going to be happening in the future. And of course, so the live shows, being able to pay tribute to the past, but being able to forge forward. I mean, it's just an amazing time to be a Rhapsody fan. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's exactly what we are thinking because, I mean, this rec we love this record, but now we are even more excited con thinking about the next one because the result is just what we love. And, and it's great to know that we have already some song 
ready uh, regarding the composition. So now we have a, it's just the right time to, to think about the tour, promote the record and, and do a second one that possible is even better. That's it. <laughs> Oh, perfect. And I think with that, I think that's an amazing note to end on. And thank you so very much for taking this time to be able to talk to me about everything that's going on in the world right now. It's really Leon Rhapsody uh, being able to uh, t talk about this amazing new album, Zero Gravity, Rebirth and Evolution, coming out the 5th of July through Nuclear Blast. I love this album so much. I know it's going to be one of my favorite albums when I do my best of the year. And it was just an amazing honor to be able to talk to you. I mean, uh, with what you've done with Rhapsody. Thank you so much. I love what you do with Angra. One of my favorite live shows ever was seeing you being able to perform Holy Land at Proc Power USA. And just everything, wow. that, everything that you've done to this point. I'm just so grateful for your voice, your musician skills. And again, the honor to be able to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.